Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Hive Swap. Last we left off, we started actually playing as Zephros, this guy over here, a troll character. Again, you'd be more familiar with the whole troll whole, uh, homeworld and everything else if you read Homestuck, but I think that they actually do into go into pretty good detail in this game. Alright, well, let's look at the door. The door to your respite block, where you sleep. You're standing on your gander pre precipice. So one of the other things that they have in co that, what, that they have with this world is that things are named a little differently. Respite block would be like bedroom. Uh, gander precipice would be this little balcony over here. So yes, they have rather complicated names for things that we have simple concepts for. There we go, that's the music. Let's see. White gloves, shoe polish, training silverware, everything an inv involuntarily aspiring butler needs. Huh. You've already tidied your butler training materials, even the ones you used to tidy the other ones. Hmm. You use these to practice your budding powers of telekinesis. You still aren't very good yet, but you sure showed those spoons who's boss. You don't use your hands to bend spoons, you use the power of imagination. By which you mean your weak, unreliable psychic powers. Okay, well, that's what this is. Yes, that's right. Practice makes almost adequate. That's the burgundy way. Your mind flexes with the pulsing might of your phenomenal telekinetic powers as you bend a tiny little silver spoon without even using your grubby little grubby fingers big, tough guy. Better bring this along, just in case you run into any bent soup. <laughs> okay. Aw. You play pusher, of course. Burgundies are ideally suited to this position because of their telekinetic powers and their ability to commune with dead players. Also, pusher is the most dangerous position and no one really cares if rust bloods get killed. Boy, that sounds pleasant. Things in this world are considerably more brutal. Your wear grid study scroll. To be honest, only indigos really care what fork goes where, and they crush anything they pick up anyway. Huh. You've pretty much got this memorized already. It's like, uh, fork, fork, mega fork, micro fork, knife fork, fool's fork. That about covers it. Huh. Alright. What's this? Arena stickball has o been always been the only time you feel really you really feel like yourself. I can read, I promise. I have not demonstrated that so far, but when you're out on the velvet, your brawler defending you against the opposing prowlers and zappers, and you guess thinking about it too much makes you a little sad now. Oh hey, it's your arena stickball gear. You play pusher. It brings back fond memories of your lessons playing in the out out glut grub grub league. You're trying out for the Thrash Thrash Thrust Junior League soon, but you're a little rusty. If you blow it, you could get cold. Between band practice with Tetrak Damic, revolution lectures from Tetrak Damic, and buttling practice, you mostly serve Tetrak Damic, you really haven't had the time you need to practice. Speaking of, there's your brand new butler uniform. It brings back less than fond memories of when you ordered it sweeps ago. Delivery to rust bloods like you is so slow. And hey, there's your smash suit from when the, te when the Tetrak helped you practice cool action movie stunts. Your memory from that time is a little hazy, actually. Uh-huh. That's good. You'll never forget the season your arena stickball team took third place in the Outlet Grub League. But just in case you do, this featureless white orb is here to remind you. Uh-huh. It's your tablet. You use it for pretty much everything. Your auto-tune mic is plugged into it. Huh. It's your tablet. You use it for pretty much all computing needs. Perfect device for a kid on the go, except you spend most of your time at home, so it usually just stays right here in your room. Unfortunately, a kid on the go is probably exactly what you are now. You really should grab. <laughs> Excuse me, grab it. Besides, your mic is plugged into it, and you're sure not leaving that behind. Let's see. The grubbles, the grubbles, if you buck, we don't trouble to resist throwing fist while you sift through the rubble. 
It's sort of hard to spit your quasi-revolutionary rhymes with any real fire while dressed in your butler uniforms, though. Damick says you're subversively transforming the rags of your oppression into the fatigues of the revolutionary through your jams. But you're kind of worried your performances will be drowned out by sarcastic orders to polish the silver. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. It's your... Oh, okay, the mic. Okay, so I guess we're going to pick this up. You gather both tablet and mic with one practice motion. They're attached, so the motion probably didn't require as much practice as you might think. You then proceed to have this conversation again from the other side. It's all news to Zephros, but it'd be, it'd be a little dull to read the whole thing over again. Let's just pick up where we left off. Do you want me to say more alien things? No, I mean, I have no way to verify if those are true or not. Oh, um, oh, send me a picture of you. I don't have any photos with me, and anyway, how could I get it to you? I'm trapped in here by that monster. Aren't you using the Tetrarch's tablet? Take the pics with that and transmit it over. Etc. Pictures. Transmit. Okay, um, that's kind of a weird ask, Xerox, but here, I'll give it a shot. Here goes! <laughs> oh, wow! It is an alien! Oh, yeah! You're definitely an alien! Or you have some strange collection of grotesque physical and mental dis diseases. Uh... Either way, you need my help! Oh, Jesus. Okay, that much is definitely true. I'm pretty sure I heard the monster scratching at the door. He's probably hungry. Anyway, man, if you're an alien, we've got to get you out of here. The heiress hates aliens. <sighs> the what? The heiress! Oh, uh, well, she's awful and controls everything, basically. I mean, I doubt she's ever met one. But to hear her talk, she hates aliens as much as she hates lowbloods. Which I guess you also are. You're practically a member of the, of the Resistance already! Uh... I'm not sure whether to be really confused or really concerned about you. Do you... need help? One time, when things got really bad with my brother, my babysitter told him, took him to the doctor and it seemed to help. <laughs> what's a brother? What's a babysitter? What's a doctor? Us, uh, either one of these, any of these. What's a brother? Wow, you are so lucky. I really don't know. Okay, I'm definitely concerned. Being concerned is what friends do for each other. I've never had anyone but Tetrarch Damic be concerned about me before. Oh, jeez. I bet the other Tetrarchs will be extremely excited to hear there's an alien helping us now. Uh, sure. But I'm sort of pretty focused on not being killed by the monster at the other room at the, in the other room at the moment. That's kind of my main deal right now. I don't really have a lot of time for anything else. Right, yeah, of course. I'll help you. And the Tetrarch, too, because, well, I, I think... Okay, I hope this is also helping him somehow. Which reminds me, we really shouldn't be talking like this. Like what? Tetrarch Damic says we always have to assume our communications are being monitored. And this is exactly the kind of conversation I shouldn't be having. Oh man, I better hurry up and get over there. On my way now. Please don't message me anymore. I'm d it's dangerous. Be right back. In person, I mean. <laughs> well, okay then. So now that's definitely an alien. <laughs> Every low blood who ever picked up Mike dreams of competing on Slam or Get Cold. The winner leaves their unhappy life behind for fame, fortune, and the love of millions. The losers leave their unhappy lives behind for relatively certain death. So in case you ever wanted an insight into the kind of humor of Homestuck. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look around here. Cleaning supplies. The noble instruments of your future career, you guess. It's kind of, it kind of depresses you to keep them anywhere you like to have fun, so you just dumped them at the end of the hallway. Well, that's clean. Maybe if your hallway is really clean, the drums will stop trying to burn your neighborhood down and kill you? Uh, there's that rust blood moxie. Oh. <laughs> he was always giving you his leaves to eat. Or leaves to eat. He would munch on them for his benefit, mostly. Come to think of it, you have always been pretty strong. Could those bitter leaves you nod on as a wiggler have something to do with that? When you were just a little wiggler, curling up with your Lucis made you feel safe while the world was scary, which was often. Jeez, come to think of it, the two of you haven't played on the tree in so long time. Maybe that's why he's been so lazy? 
Well, at least it looks like the two of you will both be getting some exercise in the immediate future. So yes, in this world, among other things, there are many different colors of blood for the trolls. So, like, you've got burgundy, and they tend to be considered of the lower class. There are uh, brown or gold-blooded individuals. There are... You can go up through the different colors, basically. Um, yellow, uh, green, different shades of teal, blue, and then through purple. And fuchsia is the highest ranked. Those tend to be the leaders, and all they're a very select few numbers. In Troll Society... You have Eleusis, which is what protects you, especially as a child, instead of parents or siblings. You kind of wish you could live somewhere with more trees, and then maybe he'd be less asleep always? Like most things in your life, though, you didn't really have much say in the matter. Tentric Damic had you act out scenes from from your from some of your favorite action movies, which you saw which just so happened to be his favorite action movies too. You're lucky to have a Moirail who really pushes you. A Moirail is... Okay, so Troll Society has a very complicated uh, set of relationships that you generally want to fill. A quadrant. Four different types of romance, emotional connection that you want to fill. This is, again, a very complicated thing to explain, especially in a short amount of time. But Moirails are basically like platonic soulmates. They're there for the cuddling, the support. They're their very, very close best friends. And they generally push you to succeed in a positive way. Like, through positive reinforcement. This is from the 12th, par 12th Perigee's Eve, when Damik gave you the autotune mic he made. This was his way of letting you know he'd, all, he'd started a band, and that you were the singer, and also that your voice could use a little help. You still can't believe they got a shot of you at the exact moment you clobbered the clover. What a lucky break! Nice. It's just your faithful old scour, Dre, which you haven't bothered draining recently. Inside of it, resin fluid and floor filth coalesce to a repugnant gray sludge. Okay. In contrast to Tetrarch Damic's percussive machismo, your stage persona is more skittish, as if you're vaguely terrified of the implications of your own pseudo-revolutionary rhymes. Which is not far off the mark, as one of the implications could be your execution. This is this was a great night. Damic insisted you have half the flavor disc. Your Lucis took the, this picture, a delightful trick he has never repeated. Alright, so that's Tetrarch Damic. You guys have a lot of fun in the studio, as evidenced by this candid selfie Tetrarch Damic told you to take. Uh-huh. Look at you, so carefree. You wish you were gearing up to play right now. You were so excited to show him that branch. He ate all the leaves in one very slow bite, and you were left with a pretty decent hive-made cubat. The first cubat you ever had, actually. Aww. That's very nice. Your smear spinner has gotten a lot of use lately. Why, just look at that even glisten of mucus on the floor. Beautiful. You could almost take pride in it. Alright. Well, let's take a look in this room over here. The door to your rumpus room. Oh my! What's a rumpus room? Oh. The crest of the Alternian Pro Arena Stickball League, with all 15 balls. In a real game of Arena Stickball, these are all different sizes and each has its own distinct powers. Okay. Pause right in the height of, an, of exciting sport. Okay. Near Splay Sack, a chair bag filled with soap or slime. Proximity to the slime helps you relax without actually making you fall asleep like your recuperate, recuperate coon does. Some trolls actually eat soap or slime, which helps them be really stupid. Huh. That's chill. Sometimes when you're tired, you just kind of chill out here in your splay sack for a few hours instead of going to sleep in your Cooper raccoon. Sometimes when you do that, you think about your life and the decisions you've made and how much of a choice you ever really had about a lot of things. You try not to dwell on stuff like that, though. Nothing like a little recessed table tabletop arena stickball with your best bud. Too bad he's not around right now. Maybe later. Let's play! Nah, Resist Tabletop Arena Stickball isn't very fun by yourself. It's not very much like Arena Stickball, either. 
You take us a pretty good substitute to the nug bone in your day. The pusher is the only player allowed to score, so they're prime targets for, for the opposing defense. That helm is so worn out that it's basically worthless, except for its sentimental value, which is still pretty low. Your Zoltan Matsa's bubble nug figurine is the jewel of your collection. Oh my god. The Thrash Thrust Snow Globes are the best team to ever play the sport of lords, and that is simply all there is to say on the matter. Playing for them is your dream. Okay. So I'm ignoring this big thing over here. Oh, I just skipped over that, didn't I? Was, you guess. Okay. I don't know why I ignore that for some reason. Anyway, so I'm ignoring this big thing over here. Let's look at it. It's your sports vault. Just the huge, heavy vault themed with sports. I mean, a stick ball specifically and obviously. It's the only place in the hive you can store food for your Lucis. He's so strong, he could easily break into any other hiding place. It has a special telekinesis-based interface. It tends to wear you out a little, and the combination is pretty hard to remember. Well... It's your Cubat, your most prized piece of arena stickball equipment. You better bring this with you. You try to put the cu pull the Cubat free, but it seems you wedged it in there a little too tight. Whoops! You'll need to find something to help you pry it loose. Huh? Something to help pry it loose, huh? And then maybe the auto tune mic? No, no. The Cubat rack is for storing the instruments of your other failed dream. Oh boy. All right. So maybe we can pry it loose with telekinesis. You can't quite lift a cube out with your telekinesis. The best pushers can, but you're not one of them. Alright. Well, the only other real thing that we have, because we could try to wedge it out with a book, but let's say. Let's not. You wedge the bent spoon in between the hilt and the wall, and... Yes! You got the cube hat! This thing packs a wallop, especially when the tip is chalked and it's carried by you. Nice! Alright. Let's try to open this. You can't open the sports vault with your hands. Try thinking before you act. Okay. Let's try thinking. So, yeah, I have no control over this. Hmm. <laughs> I'm guessing that says something like you have failed. That's a rough one. It can be hard to remember the path when you're already concentrating on your shaky telekinesis. It helps if you have some kind of guide on hand. You've got just the thing, but, uh, you don't think it's in this room. Hmm. Okay, well, let's try going downstairs. We've got our cue bat just in case we need it. And there's even more stuff around here to look at. Oh, goodness. Let's see. Well, there's always this. Ah, that picture. Once again, your imperial edict mandated portrait of the heiress. She rules your planet with a perfectly manicured golden fist. You know, it's perfectly manicured because she recently issued imperial memori an imperial memori memorandum about her new nail art. The drones outside are doing her dirty work. She'll have a shiny top coat of blood after tonight. All of it common hued, you're sure. Hmm. Well. Let's see. You subscribe to a wide variety of hit periodicals. Arena Stickball Illustrated, Grubbed Diurnally. Those are actually the only titles you know. The rest always incorporated to the magazine's name on the cover into some sick graphic design to the point that you can't actually tell what the name is. This one with the graffiti of the Muscle Beast throwing up is usually about movies, though. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's see, I don't think there's actually anything that you see with this, you just change the channel. I'm guessing that's the heiress, celebrating herself. And that's static. Huh. Okay. Let's see, oh, there's her hexagonal... As a rust blood, you're not permitted to have luxurious circular discs, only the standard hexagons. Okay. These lodge planks aren't full of soap or slime or anything like that. They're just comfortable horizontal surfaces, suited to either sitting or lying prone positions. Okay. You designed your hive around this tree, hoping it would grow along with you and your Lucis. Nice. Okay. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, hey, speaking of Lucis, there it is. But we're going to have to find out what's going on with them and what else we're going to need to do before we go and try and rescue Joey on the next installment of Let's Play Hive Swap. Hope to see you then!